Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Just under two years ago, I released my first video on the Unified Dream Router, and I haven't really released anything else about it since that day. Well, now that is going to change. There was an update with the Dream Router, and it doesn't even show in the release notes that I could find, but we are now able to support three different applications. So the Dream Router always has to run network, so that's one. In this video, we're going to run protect, and we're going to run talk. But you could run Unify Access, Connect, or inner space. Now, if you'd like to support my channel, I do now have Ubiquity affiliate links that are in the description below. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. And I do have a Discord server, which you'll also find down below. Now, this isn't going to be a full blown configuration video, but we will set up network, protect, and talk pretty basic that would work for a small business. But before we do that, let's take a look at what the UDR could handle. On the Ubiquity site, they label it very clearly for us. So our man Management. Our deployment time is less than five minutes. The amount of unified devices we could have connected to this console is 20 plus and clients we could have 150 plus. For the networking, it does one gigabit per second, but the internet throughput is only 700 megabits per second. So if you have a faster internet connection than that, you're gonna have to move up to something like the UDMSE. It supports 255 VLANs and we have integrated Wi-Fi 6 4x4 and we have two PoE ports. So my dome camera, that's connected to the back of the UDR as well as a touch phone. This is pretty much the setup that I have. We have my UDR, it's connecting out to the internet and then we have a dome camera and then we have one talk phone. If you are a small business, this would be a great little setup. You could have a couple more phones, add a switch and one more camera if you're doing the 2K cameras. The UDR really only supports two cameras and the UDR has a 128 gigabyte SSD that will record our detections for Unify Protect. If you want to add more storage, you could always throw in an SD card. Now we're on the main dashboard for the UDR. It says the UDR can run up to three applications simultaneously. So we wouldn't be able to install Access Connect or Interspace because we already have three network, protect and talk. We're first going to start off with our network, so let's click into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to settings, and then we're going to go to system, and we're going to change this over to dark mode, and then we're going to apply the changes. I'm only going to create two different networks here. I'm going to create a staff network, and I'm going to create a guest network. So we'll go up to networks, we'll do a new virtual network, and we'll call this one staff. Our router is going to be the YouTube test, which is my UDR. I'm going to uncheck auto scale, and we're going to fill out some information. We're going to have this at 192.168.22.1. We're going to scroll down to manual and give it a VLAN of 22. We're not going to turn on isolation because that wouldn't allow any clients to see each other or it wouldn't allow us to see other subnets. It would only allow us to go out to the internet and that's what we'll be doing for our guest network. But we will want to block this staff network from seeing the default and the guest and we'll do that in traffic rules. So all we need to do now is press add. Now we're gonna add another virtual network. This time it's gonna be called guest. We're gonna uncheck auto scale and I'll give this one a 32.1. We'll scroll down the VLAN ID will be 32 and we are gonna check off guest isolation. We don't want any of our guests to be able to see any other devices. We only want them to have internet access. And we'll also put some speed limiting on them as well under those traffic rules. Now we need to create two Wi-Fi networks. So we'll go up to Wi-Fi. I already have one called test. That's just the default, but we'll create new. The first one will be called staff. We'll give it a password of test one, two, three, four. And the network for this is gonna be our staff network. And then we're gonna press add Wi-Fi networks. The UDRs also do support the private pre-shared keys. And I have another video on that if you wanna check it out. So we're going to add the Wi-Fi network and now we're going to create one more for the guest network. We'll just call it guest, give it a password of test one, two, three, four. And then this time the network will be our guest network and we'll add Wi-Fi. Now let's take a look at some of the things that we could do under security. So we have our security and we're under the general tab. We have device identification, we have traffic identification, and then we have country restrictions. So if you click on country restrictions, you could either block allow and you could do it in different directions. We could do both directions outgoing or incoming. 
We could also select the country or territory. So we'll click on there. I'm just gonna select the first one and press save. Another feature within the UDRs and the Unify OS in general is ad blocking. So if we click on ad blocking, we could specify which network we want this to be on. So I'm gonna select it all. We can't really do too much more than that. It's pretty simple and basic. Another new feature that was brought into Unify OS recently was DNS over HTTPS. So if we just leave it on auto, it's gonna be using Google and Cloudflare but you can manually select whoever you want. They have quite a bit in this drop down menu. I'm gonna leave it on auto and we're gonna turn on some internal honeypots. So to do honeypots, we need to create new. Clicking on create new will show us the network. So this is the default network and it always selects the dot two. So we're 192.168.1.2. We're gonna create and then we're gonna add it for our other networks as well. We're gonna create a new one and this one's for the staff. You can see it's 22.2. And now we need to do our guest network and this will be 32.2. Now we need to do a couple things under our traffic rules. One is to limit the guest Wi-Fi and wired speed. And the other is to block the staff from seeing the default and the guest. So let's go into our traffic rules. The first traffic rule we'll do is to block the staff from seeing other networks. So the action is going to be to block. The category is going to be a local network. And this local network is going to be our staff network. We're gonna save the staff network, and then we need to select the traffic direction. Since we don't want it talking to the default, or we don't want it talking to the guest, we're just gonna say to and from. And then we could either select a device or a network to block out. We're just gonna say all devices, because it's just our two networks, the default and the guest, and we'll press save. You could add a schedule to this if you like, but we're gonna want this to be going every day, so 24 seven, and then we need to give it a description. So we'll just say block staff, Two networks. Once we press add rule, the staff aren't going to be able to get to the default or they won't be able to get to the guest. Now we need to create another entry and this time it's going to be for speed limiting our guest network. So all we need to do is click on speed limit. Our category, this is going to be for internet speed. You can block it out towards app groups, domains, IP or region as well, but we just care about the internet for this instant. Now we have our download and we have our upload limit and they're set to kilobits per second. We're going to switch that to megabits per second on both upload and download and I'm just going to give them 10 by 2. Now we need to select the device or network so you could put this just on a phone if you'd like or you could select the whole subnet. So we're going to select our guest network and we're going to press save but you can see down below that we have a couple different devices. Now we're not going to have this on a schedule it will just be on all the time and we'll say limit guest to 10 mbps and then we'll add the rule. The good thing about doing it this way is this blocks out our wired speed as well as our wireless speeds. One thing that I forgot was IDS and IPS or what Ubiquity now calls suspicious activity and that's done under our general. So if we click on general, we'd see suspicious activity and we're going to want to put this on advanced. If we scroll down, we could select which networks they're on. Typically, you're going to want it on all your networks, but we have two different filtering modes. We have notify and we have notify and block which I prefer notify and block. If some malicious activity is coming into my network, I'd rather it be blocked than not blocked. You could also have this completely turned off. We also have a detection sensitivity, so low, medium, or high. I always turn mine to high, but we can have it on custom. Within the UDRs, we only have 11 different toggle switches. I think within the UDMs, we have about 30 to 35 and then I'll press save. We also have the dark web blocker as well as known malicious IP blockers. So we'll apply the changes and that will turn that on for us. On the back end, it is Sericata. We could also go over to the side, which it says gateway, and we could look at our traffic filtering and this will show us the threat blocks, the ad blocks and traffic rule enforced, as well as our geo. The geo just brings up a map of where the UDR is talking to. So we could see in the blue, in North America, which I'm at, that's where most of the traffic's gonna be. You could also block out other countries here. So say we wanna block out Russia, you could click on there and then press block. Now to change a physical network port to a different VLAN or a different network, what we have to do is go up to our switch, or in this case, this is my UDR, and go to port manager. We could see on port two, we could pretend that this is a staff computer. We're gonna click on port two, and then we're gonna switch the native VLAN network, drop it down and put it on staff. Now this next part is very important. Right now it just says allow all traffic, but we're gonna wanna block all different VLANs 
to it, even though we have those traffic rules in place. Now, the next section, we're going to set up Unify Talk. You can see the Talk controller is ready to be set up, and we'll just click on that button right there. Now it's saying, Welcome to Unify Talk. And it's going to say, I will use Talk in and select your country. I'm in Canada and we're gonna to agree to the terms and service, and then we're gonna press start setup. All right, and it says set up different devices, and it could assign to, we could click the drop down menu, and I'm gonna add a new user. This user is gonna be called Cody, last name McCallum, which is my name, and we'll add the user. We could see that it's assigning us an area code. I live in Ontario, so it's gonna give us a free 15 day trial if you're brand new to Unify Talk, and then we'll press next. You need to put in your emergency service information. So this would be if you call 911, they know where you're located. I'm gonna fill that out and I'm gonna press next. Now within Unify Talk, you could see that we have the touch phone and it's assigned to Cody McCallum and it's given us that number. So 226. 212-7383. I won't be using this number at all. It's just for testing, but I did connect another touch phone max. We could see here that it's not assigned to any user yet. So let's click on the touch max and then assign this device. I'm just going to assign it to that Unify user and they're not going to get a number right now and we'll press assign. So now that Unify user, it could only make internal calls. So extension to extension, with one Unify Talk subscription, you can make unlimited inbound and outbound calls. And how we do that, we create a group. Now in the top right corner, we have add group. And from here, I'm gonna give it a group name of staff. The group number is gonna be that a number that was assigned to Cody McCallum, and it will be taken away from that. It won't be able to be used as a direct line to Cody McCallum user. We had do call handling a couple different ways simultaneous or we could do sequential we're just going to leave it at default and then we're going to add the members within this group we'll click on add members and we're just going to add everybody to it and press assign now we have unanswered calls and we're going to have it global send to voicemail but we need to have a voicemail recipient so that's going to be cody mccallum and then you could choose your ring back i'm going to press add and now both of these phones will be able to make calls and receive calls at the same time. Now, a couple things that we aren't going into because I'm gonna be doing a full 2024 setup for Unified Talk once they release their new Talk phones, which is supposed to be coming this year, but we can do our smart attendant. So if you click on engagement, we could set up a smart attendant. This would be something like a greeting when you call the number, and then you could do a tree to direct the traffic. So you could say press one for staff, press two for sales, so on and so forth. They also do have SMS and you have 50 messages that you could send out. We also have our system log, which will show us our call log, our SMS messages, and then critical alerts. And then we could go down to our settings wheel. Under our settings wheel, you could see the price of our subscription of what we're gonna be paying. And you could also purchase more talk numbers if you would like. We could do porting if we already have a number with an existing carrier. And then we could look at stuff like call settings, which would be ring back, our music on hold, and we could upload our own if we'd like. Now, the only other thing that I'll show you is how to do voicemail to email transcriptions. Under your user, if you had add an email address for them, they would be eligible for this. So if somebody leaves them a voicemail, it will push out to their email. And how we do this, we go to notifications and we could see our voicemail. We'll click on the email icon and we'll show additional information. So we could do recording and transcription. We could enable that and we could do unread voicemails only. I'm gonna uncheck that so that everything goes out to my email. Now, the last thing that we're gonna look at is Unify Protect, and it could be pretty plug and play. It's very easy to set up. We're gonna go over to the devices because I need to adopt that G4 camera. If you're new to Ubiquity, when you plug in maybe their access point, a switch or something like that into the network, the network controller will recognize it. You will need to adopt it into your controller to make configuration changes. But we can see the G4 doorbell is ready to be adopted. So we'll click on it and this will bring it into our controller. And you probably just heard a noise behind me sounding off that it was going in. The G4 dome is now adopted into our Unify Protect controller. And if we click on it, we could look at our recording mode. Currently, we're just using the SSD on the UDR itself, so it's only going to record our detections and not do 24-7. If you do need something that does 24-7 or you need more camera storage, you would have to upgrade to something like the UMVR. But we could use global configuration or we could uncheck that. So it says when to record. We could have it always record, custom schedule, or never. 
And it is saying continuous, but it's not going to do continuous if it's using that SSD. Now we have different AI events, and this is something that's pretty new. You could see under video detections that it's doing just animal right now. If we click on there, we could do person and also vehicle and press save. We also do have audio detections. So it would be something like a baby crying or glass breaking or a dog barking. And I do have another video on that upgrade, which I'll put down in the description below. Now, if you have a lot of cameras in your Unify Protect controller, which you won't be able to with the UDR as it only handles two, and you're noticing some buffering when you're going to the live playback, you could always turn off insights. The insights really is just gonna count how many people walk by, how many cars, and also do a little heat map of it. So if you don't need that and you want to save some more resources, you just need to click it off right here. And the last thing we'll talk about is updates. So currently this UDR is doing auto updates for the Unify OS and the application. If you're not coming into your Unify console at least once a month to check for updates, I would leave auto updates on. I never personally have them on myself or for any of my customers. I always do it manually. Now, if your Unify account is tied to a single sign-on, so the Ubiquity account, we could do backups right to their cloud. And you could see the system config backup. We don't have any backups right now, so we're gonna push one out. So we'll go backup now. And this pushes it out to account.ui.com. So if your UDR ever breaks, you just have to buy a new one, sign in with your single sign-on, and then load that backup and you'll be up and running within five minutes. Now that was a quick video on the UDR. The biggest thing here is that we could add more than two applications. We could now have three. So it really does make this worthwhile for a small business that has under a 700 megabit per second connection. There's a lot more we could do with Unify Network, Protect and Talk configuration wise. This was just to get you up and running with the basics. If you want to watch more on those controllers, I do have other videos on my YouTube channel. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.